Today we're going to be taking this Fury car, which I've got it disassembled right now uh, to do some updates on it as well as rehang the body. We need to kind of fluff up the body a little bit. While I'm at it, um, I decided to go ahead and take and update the hubs from these Willwood Starlight hubs to the Winters Trackstar hubs. And I'm going to go through all the steps that I take as well as set up the bearing spacers. The first thing that I did was I disassembled the entire car. I pulled all the hubs off and I inspected everything, all my spindles. Um, I inspected the rear end housing. I inspected everything just to make sure there was no damage. And when I disassembled this, I found that whoever had prepped this car and built this car uh, originally, um, they went ahead and they painted these spindles. And I see that they actually painted the surface to where the seal rides. And as you can see, if you look really, really close, it's actually cut through that paint. And I believe there's some primer underneath of it, as well as they got it on the shoulder. It's really difficult to see, but they got it on that shoulder where the bearing rides. And when you have it on that shoulder and it starts to flake away, it creates a little bit of a gap there. So having the bearing spacers on there, if that was to kind of flake off and fall out, it would have changed the adjustment point on those. So I'm going to go through and clean all that off. Here is the right front spindle, and as you can see, I've gone through with my emery cloth and I cleaned all of that paint and junk off of there. Whoever painted these actually did a great job. They uh, they primed them. I don't know if they wet sanded them or not, but they had a great primer on there and then a nice paint. Um, just like powder coat or paint or whatever, if you have that material on there and it starts to flake off, now all of a sudden you've got a gap for oil to seep out, as well as kind of beat up on that seal. Those little flakes will be riding underneath that seal and it could tear the seal. Um, these are oil bath hubs and I don't want to run the risk of losing that oil out of there. We've had these things leak before, so I want to take every step I can, every bit of care I can to make sure that that's a great seal against that spindle. Also, like I said, if it's got paint on this on this edge here where the bearing rides, um, it is going to change that adjustment, especially if it starts to flake out of there or smash through heat. Um, the best bet is just to keep that as clean as possible. Every time I take these apart, I take a little bit of emery cloth and a scotch bright, and I clean up all of these edges. Sometimes when you're taking these hubs on and off, on and off, they'll they'll might there might be a small ding there, and it gets hard to push that bearing over top, and it gets hung up. So just hit it with some light emery cloth and uh, and clean them up. It just makes life a lot easier. Now you can see that I've got it all cleaned up. I've got the uh, the edge of it all cleaned up. It's nice and polished. Now I've just got to clean it thoroughly so I can start putting my new hub on and setting my bearing spacer. Whenever I'm doing this, I always take a wire brush and I try to get all the junk cleaned out of these threads. That's just some grime, uh, dirty, dirty grease, just junk that you just don't need in your in your new hub. So just take a, uh, a wire brush and just clean as much of that junk out of there as you can. I'm now ready to start setting up my bearing spacer. To do this, I use clean bearings. I don't want any grease or any oil or anything in those bearings because that creates a film and it changes your spacing. So I want clean bearings. I can install my back bearing in the hub. I don't want the seal. I don't want anything in the back of the hub, just the bearing. So I could put it on, put my bearing spacer in and set up my bearing spacer. I'll be pulling this on and off several times and I don't want to tear that seal up. Plus Plus you just don't need the drag in it. All right, we're now ready to start assembling. So what I'll do is I'll take my inner bearing, slide it on all the way till it comes to a stop. I can put my hub spacer on there and make sure your set screw is loose. Don't take it out, just make sure it's loose. And then I can slide my hub on. My outer bearing, 
And now I'm always going to use my ring that goes on the back side of my nut just so I can make sure everything's in place. And then the nut. I've got my bearing spacer installed and when I run my nut down all the way and I torque it just a little bit, I can feel there's tension in it and it's not free. Um, obviously there's no slop in it, so I know that my bearing spacer is too short. I need to pull it out and lengthen my bearing spacer. I'm going to go about a quarter turn on this until I find the point where I actually have some gap and then I can back it up. Going little increments, it just takes forever to do this. You're going to have this hub off there 15, 20 times. So go a little bit further until you get that gap and then it's easier to back up at that point. So right there, I've got it locked down all the way. I've preloaded it about 30 pounds, and I can see that it spins nice and free. Um, I've got no slop in it at all. When I back it up just a little bit, when I back it up and I just set it basically snug, I've got no pressure in it at all. I think this one is just a, just a tick tighter than I want. So I'm going to extend it just a hair and try it again. Now that I know I've got it close, I'm just going to snug it a little bit so that it doesn't move on me while I put it back together. Okay, I go to snug, I can feel just a, just a tiny, 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 tiny bit of movement in it. Now when I go ahead and I lock it down and I tighten it, that movement is gone and it's still free. That's a perfect bearing setup. Now when I go ahead and I put oil in it, or if you grease it, that little bit of material in those bearings will, will create kind of a coating, and it will tighten that up just a hair, but it'll take any, any uh, movement out of that at all. So, like I say, now I can disassemble it, lock down my bearing spacer, I could put my seal in the back, my snap ring, I can finish this hub up, and I know that this bearing spacer is absolutely perfect. Here are the hubs that we're going to be using. They are a Winters Trackstar hub. They are a forged aluminum hub. They've got these beautiful window cutouts. This is a really, really nice hub. Um, they are a little bit heavier than the cast hubs that will be taken off, the, the Willwood Superlight hubs, but you make up for it in strength. We've had the ears break off of the Winters hubs, the cast hubs. These, we've crashed a couple of times with these hubs, and these things take a beating. We've actually crashed hard enough one time where we bent these ears back, 
and they never broke the wheel stayed on the car um yeah the hub was junk we had to throw it away but these are the greatest hubs if you're running a hide load situation where you know that you fracture hubs often this is a great option for a wide five one of the things i like best about these hubs where the inner bearing is and where the seal rides there's a spiral lock snap ring that holds the seal in it's not like a press in like the uh like the cast hubs are um, it's nice and easy. You could pop that spiral lock out, change that seal really easily, and you don't have to beat on the uh, the seal to get it out. You don't have to you know, yank on it from the inside out to try to knock that seal out. It's just a really easy replacement. When I get ready to do my final assembly, I will take a little tiny bit of grease, and I will run around those races just so that I've got a thin film of grease on them. Um, this car is going to sit for a little while before I put uh, hub oil in it, and uh, this will just ensure that nothing gets uh, rusty or, or anything. It just stays a nice, clean surface. I will also take and put a little bit of grease in the seal so that the steel stays, stays lubricated and uh, it doesn't tend to wear out. There you can see we've got our bearing, our seal, and the spiral ring. This thing's ready to go back on. We are now ready for final install. I'm gonna put a little tiny bit of grease on my threads here. I will put a little bit of grease where this bearing rides. And I'm also gonna put a little bit of grease where the seal rides here. It doesn't take a whole lot. This just helps ensure that everything slides together and it doesn't have any issues. All right, I got a little bit of grease on my race. And I am ready to start sliding this thing together. I went ahead and I locked down my set screw on my bearing spacer. There we go. The reason why it's not spinning as free now is because we've got a little bit of grease on both of those bearings and the seal is in the back side and that seal kind of fits tight enough that it does drag that speed down. That's why I say when you set these up, don't put the seal in the back yet. Um, make sure you have dry bearings, the seal is out, and you'll be able to set it up and know exactly what you got because when you assemble it now with grease in the bearings and, uh, and that seal in the back, a little bit of grease on it, even though we're going to be an oil bath hub, you do feel some of that drag from that grease. Um, all in all, we're good to go. Um, I did preload it a little bit, maybe 20, 25 pounds, just because that bearing spacer in there, um, I'm just making sure everything's tight. That bearing spacer is going to keep it from, from uh, pinching those bearings together. And uh, no, um, I'm really happy with it. This one's ready. This one's all done.